Well, sometimes pigs do fly. A libertarian economist says, yeah, Bernie's a good guy. Check it out. Leave your comments, ding the bell, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. On the line with us is our old buddy Charles Sauer. He is a libertarian and an economist, and he is the president of the Market Institute in Washington, D.C., which is where I got to know Charles. Marketinstitute.org is the website. He's also the author of a new book, Profit Motive, What Drives the Things We Do. Charles, welcome back to the program. Thanks for having me back on. And I should say your uh, Twitter handle is at Charles Sauer, S-A-U-E-R. Is that right? Or do I have that right? That is correct. Cool. Okay. So uh, you don't like socialism, I take it. And uh, I'm just wondering what part of American socialism is it that you think that we should be getting rid of? Is it Social Security? Is it Medicare? Is it disability insurance? These are all socialist programs. Is, are, is it uh, uh, you know, subsidies to uh, green companies? Uh, is it subsidies to the fossil fuel industry? Do you want to do away with student? Do you think we shouldn't be doing away with the student debt? Do you want to get rid of our socialist police or our socialist fire departments or our socialist public schools? Where do we begin building this libertarian paradise that you envision, Charles? Well, I think that my answer to that is yes, we can get rid of all of that. But um, I think that you, you do ask the important question. It's where where do we begin? Because if you got rid of all of that overnight, it's going to be chaos. And I think that even when you get to the end, most libertarians, most economists will agree that things like the police and firemen are uh, a good a good thing and they're in a good efficient use of government so you, you like a little socialism to, i i maybe you can say that i'll tell you what i do like i do like all of the goals of socialism and i think that that's why you and i get along uh we think that uh people should be as good off as they can be we're not going to walk past somebody that's broke on the street and kick them so we both agree that we want to reach our hands out and help them up where I disagree with socialism is that I don't believe in the dream world that you hold all economics uh, static when you just give away other people's money. I believe that there are dynamic effects when you take somebody's money away, that they change their actions and therefore the socialist economy is a dream world that doesn't exist. So I believe in capitalism to help people. I believe in capitalism to help people up. And I think that... Uh, we see that that is the better way. But socialists, you know, government gets too big. We saw Elizabeth Warren, and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm talking too long, but Elizabeth Warren good. the other night on the debate stage said uh, that she wanted the government to take over mining. And then when pushed on a follow-up question, quickly made an exemption for a metal that was needed. And that was the way, that's the way lobbying works, and that's the way socialism works. You just switch the power from a capitalist market where uh, demand changes things to a government-controlled market where lobbying and cronyism changes things. And so I would much rather have a market dictate uh, exemptions. So, uh, you know, you make a good point. We, when people take away your money, it does change your behavior. I remember back in the 1970s, I had an herbal tea company in, in uh, East Lansing, Michigan, or in Okemos, Michigan. And uh, we had a couple of really, really good years before Celestial Seasonings ate our lunch. And, and, and I was making a pile of money. And I was, you know, 22 years old, 23 years old. And uh, I remember our CPA sitting me down along with uh, Louise and saying, and my, and my business partner, Terry O'Connor, and, and saying, uh, you know, you guys are pushing up against a 50% tax, income tax bracket. It is crazy for you to keep taking money out of this company um, and giving that much of it to the government. I would suggest that you, uh, that you put this money back into your business. And we developed a whole brand new product line which allowed the company to survive another couple of years. And we, pay, we gave all of our employees health care. Um, we we uh, gave people raises. I mean, you know, uh, it did change our behavior. And it changed the behavior of CEOs all over America. The top tax rate at that point in time was 74%. And, I mean, this was before Reagan came into office. 
and, uh, and, and you could get there fairly quickly. And so what happened was the average CEO in America took only 30 times what the lowest paid employee does. Now you've got CEOs in the banking industry taking 100,000 times what their lowest paid employees are, in the pharmaceutical industry taking 10,000 times what their lowest paid employees are, in the, in the, in the uh, health insurance industry taking 10 to 70,000 times what their lowest paid employers are, are, are taking. I think that we should have policies that cause people to behave in ways that are good for business. Don't you, Charles? Well, here's the thing. You're only telling half the story because, yeah, I do think we should have policies that uh, have employers work in the most efficient way. And the most efficient way is to treat their employers right. But the fact is, is when you go back to the tax regime that you were talking about, we had people taking tax breaks for uh, lunches with their spouses. We had people taking tax do. breaks for a lot of things. So, no, uh, you can't take – you only get uh, half of your uh, meal deduction, and I don't believe it includes spouses. Uh, there's lots of things that were going on back then. So the 30 times number is, again, why I don't like socialism, because lobbyists came in and lobbied for these tax breaks based on cronyism, like, hey – I need to hide my money someplace. And they were given tax exemptions. So, yes, you're right. When you look at the top numbers, that if they were only making 30 times. But when you peel back the onion, you start seeing that we were in the exact same place, if not worse, than where we are now. Because no, that's right not now, true. we can at least more than, see the numbers. No, in 1980, Charles, more than 60% of Americans were solidly in the middle class. We dropped below 50% last year. We have not had basically an income increase since 1980, whereas from 1930 until 1980, during that four-decade period, uh, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, five-decade period, um, during that period of time, we saw the economy growing faster than it has since Reaganism began. We saw the average wage of working people grow faster, and, and in fact, it was growing faster than it was for the top 1%. The wages were tracking productivity right up until 1980, and then wages Again, went flat and productivity continued to go up. If you look at numbers with a little spyglass and a little people, which is what you have to do to make socialism work, then it, your numbers are correct. But the fact is, is if you look at the quality of life for all income brackets, the quality of life is going up because innovation is going up, competition is going so. up, TV prices have come down, housing prices are uh, reasonable again. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> they are no, exploding not, again. Charles. But we had in the in the 19, uh, right before uh, 2008, uh, housing was increasing at dramatic rates. Uh, so even after we came down, well, we still had Well, that's all post-Reaganism. I mean, you go back um, pre-Reaganism, you know, when we had reasonable interest rates and reasonable taxes, and the cost of housing was growing at basically the rate of, of, of uh, GDP growth and inflation. You know, since then, the we've seen the cost of housing, housing explode. Wasn't. You've got, you've got over 40% of Americans spending more than 50% of their income on housing right now. That was definitely not the case in 1980. And if you base that on your arguments, that shouldn't be happening. This, that should be like China building fake cities. But the fact is, is no, more I'm not, people I'm have not money advocating that can buy houses, Charles. Tom. Charles, no, I'm not. no, no. So but, let me, here's the fundamental question. But that's question. what the numbers are using. Give you, the numbers are using. Yeah, I can give you that. examples. The numbers are using. I can give you examples of democratic socialism actually working and producing good positive results and I, and I know that you you may disagree with with how it works but y uh, you understand you know I mean y you've traveled around the world people in Denmark are happy they've got you know uh, with democratic socialism they've got free education they've got free health care they've got free child care they got a year off of, you know for for maternity leaves and paternity leaves and things like that that is also true of Norway that's also true of Sweden it's also true of Denmark it's also true of France and Germany and uh, you know basically the only country in Europe that's been kneecapped since the 1980s is the Uni United Kingdom and they're having many of the same problems we are so I can point to lots and lots of examples where Bernie Sanders-style democratic socialism, and in all those cases, by the way, they're going farther than what Bernie is suggesting right now, um, actually has produced a positive result. Can you point to any country in the world where your libertarianism, where there is no Social Security, it's just private savings, where there is no Medicare or Medicaid, it's you, 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 you negotiate with a private health insurance company, where there is no public education, you go to school if your parents can, pay, can afford to pay for it. Can you point to any country in the world where your form of libertarianism has been tried and succeeded? Well, look, first off, you're wrong by pointing at those countries and saying that that's the case, because when you poll those countries, most of them say it's the capitalist portions of their economy that are what make it good. I'm not disputing but, that. 
But the, yeah, but well, that's you not just libertarianism. Because, that's regulated capitalism, but, Charles. No, no, you just pointed at you just pointed at what ten places and said that that's proof that what what you believe works. And Democratic socialism, which includes highly regulated yeah. capitalism. Yes, can you point to yeah, any country no, in the there, world where you have unregulated capitalism and functionally no social safety net? I'll give you the police and fire. You agree with me on that? So any you country don't get in the world full that socialism, works. I don't get full capitalism. What we look is that in the United States, we have a very uh, a, a reasonably capitalist society and we get drugs 12 18 24 months ahead of other countries because the research and development is done here because there's uh intellectual property is protected um because we have uh, a, a good research and development i'm not talking about um, drugs i'm arm. talking about any country in the world where I'm libertarianism has been tried and actually works Innovation happens because of capitalism. Innovation happens because Most, of libertarianism. The majority of drugs in the United States are developed a, by the National Institutes of Health, Charles. The, the only ones that are actually, developed by the drug companies are where they're tweaking an existing molecule to, to extend their patent. And that's BS, that's and not, you know it too. That's, not, that's absolutely not true, and we've actually talked about that. Because it, what we look at is they do basic research, but before you and your regulations would let somebody actually take it in the market, there's a lot of things, steps that have to take place. As you know, because you've called for regulations like that. Okay. The fact is, is that research and development happens here because we have a capitalist society. Research and I'm, development I'm doesn't not, happen I am in not, democratically I'm not trying to trash places. capitalism. Charles, forgive my interrupting, but I, I, I'm looking at the clock and I got 45 seconds before I hit a break that I can't stop. Um, if Bernie Sanders becomes president, what kind of, what, you know, what kind of horror show are you predicting? You know, I, you and I have talked about Bernie. I actually like Bernie. Again, him and I agree with the end goal. We just don't agree on how to get there. And the fact is, is that Bernie Sanders has proven to work with people across uh, the party aisles. Uh, again, he's a good guy. I don't agree with how he wants to get places, but it's not going to be a horse show. He believes in what he believes, and he's believed in it for a long time, and he tells the truth when he's out on the campaign stage. Wow. I agree with you. <laughs> I agree with you. And that is why we're friends, Charles.